relative solubility is comparing the KSPs to compounds that are relatively the same and they have to be in order to compare the values otherwise you have to do some math in order to figure it out. I'll show you what I mean. If you've got AGCl, NaI, CaCO3 and the KSP values for each and somebody says okay who's the most soluble and who's the least soluble? Rank them. Well because each one of these chemicals dissociates into two ions, Ag positive, Cl negative, Na positive, I negative, Ca2 positive, CO3 2 negative because they form the same number of ions in solution, those ions, when multiplied together in terms of their x values, will give you the same type of number. Like, for instance, this will dissociate into two ions, both of which would have concentrations x, so when you multiply them together, that's x squared. This has the same, and this has the same. Because they dissociate to the same amount of ions, you can compare their KSP values. And all you have to do is say this. The one with the higher KSP value, which is this, this number is actually greater than these two, right? Because it's got a greater value, its X value would be greater, which means greater concentrations before precipitations, which means more soluble. Here's a question. We've got a stepwise formation of this chemical right here. And first of all, copper ions are reacting with ammonia and actually forming a very weird complex ion. That is a complex ion because certain cations in solution can attract chemicals to themselves called ligands, like ammonia and water, CN negative, Cl negative, and they form complex ionic structures like this one. Complex ion and uh, ammonia acts as a ligand. Okay, so here's the first step and then ammonia reacts with this chemical that was formed here in the second step and both of them have K values that have been determined. Now, given that, what are the equilibrium concentrations of every one of these ions in solution when you have a mixture of 100 milliliters of 0.2 mole per liter ammonia reacting with 100 milliliters of 0.001 mole per liter copper 2 nitrate to get the copper, or copper 1 nitrate to get the copper ions in solution? Okay, here's the first thing you have to understand about this. You see these K values? They're very large. When a K value is very large, it's kind of saying to you, we're almost 100% reaction. So if that's the case, these two look like they're both almost 100% reactions. And you know what happens when you have a stepwise reaction mechanism and 100% arrows here? You can add the two equations together, like we're going to do right now. Okay, now here's that second equation in the mechanism, equation number two. We know the concentration now of that chemical at equilibrium and this one, but we don't know what the concentration of this one is in that mechanism, step number two. Well, we can write an expression for that, can't we? And since we know the K value, 8.2 times 10 to the 3, and we know the other two concentrations at equilibrium, we can find for X, and X is the concentration of that ion, which will in the end get 6.1 times 10 to the negative 8. That is the moles per liter, the concentration of that species in solution and we've now found that third one. Now remember the copper one ion can't be zero. We kind of estimate it to be close to zero in order to solve for everybody else. Now we work backwards and we go to the first equation. Here's that very first equation in the reaction mechanism. Okay, we know the concentration of the ammonia at equilibrium, one mole per liter. We know the concentration of this ion. We just found it as the reactant in this step, but it was the product in that previous reaction with that concentration. So we write the expression. We substitute everything we know into the expression and leave X, which is the concentration of that chemical Cu positive at equilibrium. When we solve for x, we get 2.9 times 10 to the negative 11, and we've just solved for the concentration of the copper ion, the copper 1 ammonia ion there, that copper 1 ammonium with a diamine in it, we solve for that concentration, and we've also solved for the ammonia as well. All four ions, we know the concentration in solution. It's a tough question, isn't it? But if you just break it down stepwise and understand what the K means when it's very large, that you can add equations together, you'll get it every time.